Welcome to Meet the Expert. I'm Barry Schmel with the Google Cloud Learning Services team, and I'll be your host for this special webinar series designed to help you make the most of Google Meet to work remotely with your teams and your customers. This second webinar session is for everyone in your organization. We'll discuss the best practices for running video conferences using Google Meet, as well as all of the features. The basic format is I'll spend about five minutes presenting some slides. I'll start a live session with my remote team and walk through the various settings and answer the common questions that come up from our customers. Also, please join Meet Expert website to get the full schedule and be informed of any upcoming webinars. So let's get started. Uh, here's our agenda. First, we'll discuss the best practices and then the impact on the end user. We'll demo the user experience and features, how to record a Meet session, how to live stream, locate online resources to support your organization, and get answers to your common questions. After the event, we'll post the links to the common online resources so you can reference them later. So I've been at Google for over 12 years, and we believe that video is the best way to collaborate with others. Video promotes higher engagement and consequently improves productivity. Even before the current situation, I've always used Google Hangouts or Meet to work effectively with my teammates. Every Monday morning, I meet with my teammates in London and Paris while working together in a doc to plan our week's activities. It's very effective. But especially now, Google Meet is even more significant while we're all working from home and remotely. We're able to work together with our colleagues, conduct meetings, build our relationships, and in many cases, nurture our relationships. So by now, I'm sure we've all heard that through September 30th, 2020, all G Suite customers get access to the advanced Meet features. The three enterprise features every customer gets are up to 250 participants per call or Meet session, Record meetings and save to drive. So this one is really significant with so many people working from home in different time zones in different circumstances. So you wanna be able to record those sessions and watch them later. Recording though is off by default in the admin console. So be sure your sysadmin turns it on. We covered that in the first webinar last week. The most common question we get about recording from our customers is who can start and stop recording the event? The answer is the organizer or anyone in the domain or company of the organizer can start and stop recording. The recording is then stored as an MP4 file in the recording folder of the organizer. That file can be shared with anyone the organizer wishes. The organizer also receives an email letting them know what the link is to that MP4 file. And then finally, live streaming for up to 100,000 viewers in your domain or company. This is great for scheduling an all hands meeting or company wide meeting where you want to stream the live event. Live streaming is also off by default in the admin console. So be sure your sysadmin turns it on. Remember we covered that in last week's webinar. The most common question we get about live streaming is who can view the event? The answer is anyone in your company or domain, but no one external to your company. That's why it's perfect for all hands company meetings. So what makes meetings ineffective? Well, maybe we should reword that to what makes an effective meeting? Nothing worse than an unorganized meeting. So make sure you have an agenda addressing why you're having the meeting so all our participants are aware. Uh, poor video. So make sure you're using a headset like I'm using right now, which will help your speaking, especially if you're moving around. Uh, we'll also talk about some other audio options when I get to the live demo. And then finally, poor video. This is usually attributed to network or Wi-Fi bandwidth. And once again, when we get to the live demo, I'll show you some options that you have. So let's spend a few minutes on some of the best practices and considerations when using Google Meet. First off, my home workspace does not look like that. It actually looks more like this. So what are some of the things to consider when working from home? So let's get a little bit real here. So if you're doing a fancy presentation, the backdrop, maybe that's really significant, like I did my office here, but does it really matter when you're doing something more casual? Usually I'm having my meeting sitting on the sofa in my living room. Um, the laptop is really important, so make sure it's somewhere steady 
there's nothing worse than someone walking around and, uh, and talking during a meeting. And then noise is also is something to be aware of. Having a headset really helps with that quite a bit. So for example, even though I'm talking right now, there's an airplane that you're probably not hearing because I'm using a headset. And ba network bandwidth is probably the most critical uh, item. The best practice here is using the fastest Wi-Fi that you have available in your home. Some of you may have multiple speeds, so make sure that you're using the faster speed. Um, also, working close to the router where the Wi-Fi is located is important. So once again, for my presentation today, I'm situated in the room closest to the router so that I'm able to stream the best experience. But a lot of times, I'm usually working down the hall um, you know, in my living room that's further away. If necessary, attach the physical Ethernet cable to the network uh, to give you the, the best connection. Um, this is another one for us working from home. We're sharing devices, we're sharing bandwidth um, in the network, in, the, in your Wi-Fi at home. So making sure that people turn off their other devices or they're not streaming live of other events or movies while you're having an important meeting. We'll also see that with Google Meet, you're able to adjust the video setting. I'll show that in the live demo. And also um, sometimes using an external phone for your audio versus your built-in mic can give you better quality, especially if you're the speaker, and I'll demo that when we get to that. And then finally, if necessary, turn off the camera if you're not the presenter, uh, because the camera consumes the most bandwidth, and it also can use CPU. So that can slow, slow things down on your computer. It also consumes battery. So now we're going to move into the demo, and I'm gonna walk through the various features that you're probably expecting in Google Meet. So let's start by first creating an event, um, a Meet session. So there's several ways of doing it. If you're like me, most of the time, I'm scheduling something, an event with my teammates. So maybe this is going to be something I'll call a quick sync up. And notice I can add the Google Meet video conferencing here. Notice that all that really is is a URL. It's a link that includes a meeting code, these 10 characters that you see separated by dashes. That's actually the meeting code. And with every event, there's also a phone number that people can dial in via the audio and also a PIN number that they can use. Um, I do want to point out that the phone number that you see listed here is local to me. I'm based in the US, so it's giving me a US phone number. Um, I do want to point out that we do also have international numbers. So if I'm inviting someone from my Paris office, which is located in France, when they get invited on their calendar, they'll actually see the number local to France. Notice the PIN number is the same, however, for this event. Okay. And then, of course, I can invite people to this as well. I do want to point out that if this was actually a live streaming event, if this was an all hands company meeting, notice how easy it is to add live streaming. Uh, notice that the live streaming that people will actually watch is actually another, a different link. It starts with stream.google.com and then there's this long ID number. So this you could easily copy and you could share that with the rest of the company either in another calendar event, it could be via email uh, or other or other, um, or other methods. I'm not gonna actually create that. And if I wanna join a session, it's very, very easy. Notice I can just click join. I'll do that in a moment. Uh, the other way of creating and joining a Meet event is through Gmail. And this is something we recently announced a few weeks ago, so I thought it would be nice to spend a moment or two on that. So I, once again, I can start a meeting. This brings a pop-up window that for some reason we can't see at the moment. Um, and then you can actually join that as well by clicking here. Uh, you may find this on the right side of your Gmail window, depending on what you set as your preferences, okay? And then finally, the third method is actually going to the Meet service. So I can either click that here from the app menu or I could just type meet.google.com and it will bring up um, the Meet service here. And it tightly integrates with my calendar. 
So notice how it's actually listing the two events that I have going on here today, the live event and my daily sync. So once again, I can click on that one or this one and join them, or I can click join and start a new session. So maybe I'll just call this one quick sync. I have a lot going on on my computer right now and it's getting ready and then I'm able to join that session and I'm also able to invite other people to that event as well. Okay, so we've covered several ways that you're able to actually uh, start a meeting. So now I'm going to actually move over to the live session that I have going on with my teammates. Can everyone wave and you can say hello? Great. Hey, everybody. And for some reason, just, hey, just in case you can't hear them, one of my favorite features is turning on the captions. So you'll notice if any of them start talking, hey, say something, somebody. OK, we can actually see that there. I, I really like this feature because if you have a lot of people talking at the same time, maybe they, um, you know, it's easier to read what they're saying. OK. Um, and also, we also have the chat window here, which is another way of communicating with everybody. So if anybody wants to say hello through the chat window, that's a great option, too. And I can actually type something in the chat window with everyone. Hello, everyone. So if you're trying to get feedback from everyone and you tell them to mute their line, that's another way of communicating. And then the other common question we get from customers is um, not only do you want to be able to see people, but you may want to add additional people. So like, you know, I have my core friends here, but maybe we're missing uh, Andrea. So I'm able to invite him real quickly here. It does integrate with, uh, with the rest of G Suite. Um, so if I, it should auto complete that, but I can also type in his email address and I can invite him this way as well. So this is a nice feature. Um, and then I could invite some other individuals. And once again, it's auto completing that and I can invite them on the fly very quickly. So let me spend a couple of minutes walking through some of the common settings that we see here. And probably the one that we're all excited about is changing our layouts. So let me go through that one first. So by default, what Google does, Google Meet does, it does something called it auto, auto layouts. It figures out what the best layout is. So if I'm presenting, it'll spotlight me. Um, some people like this, where the speaker feature, is, the, the featured presenter is in the middle, and then the participants are on the side. Uh, the other options we have is Spotlight, which case it would only feature me, and then the new tiled view. There's only a few of us here, but it could actually tile up to 16 participants. I know we're working on a newer version that can actually, I think I saw up to 49 which will be a seven by seven grid, but that's not available yet, okay? So let's go back to the menu here. And once again, one of the questions, top questions we get from customers is not just who can record a meeting, but how do you do that? There's this great record button that we see here. If I click on that, it will announce automatically in the meet session that it's about to start recording. So everyone is aware of that, okay? Uh, notice I can turn off captions from the settings. And once again, I can turn it back on from there. So those are some other common settings that our users walk through. And then if we go to the settings menu itself, it allows me to uh, adjust or change my audio. Maybe I have different uh, mics that I'm working with or different speakers. And then we do wanna spend a few minutes talking about video. As we mentioned earlier, um, one of the things that we want to be conscious of, especially working from home, is the quality of the video. What Google does by default is it starts with the higher quality, and then if it doesn't feel that that's good enough, if it's slowing down the bandwidth, it'll go to a lower resolution. So one of the things you can do, if you wish, is you could actually have it go from high definition to, low, to standard definition, or you could even turn off the video totally and say, you just want to go to your audio, in which case you'll notice I'm no longer seeing those individuals there. I just see a little picture of them because I went to audio only. 
So this could help with your, your experience. Obviously, if you're running into a lot of issues, um, you could actually turn your video off totally, which I just did here. So they're no longer seeing me because we're not using transmitting my video over the internet, but uh, they are. I am able to see them. So those are some of those common settings we get questions from. Let's see if I missed anyone. Oh, yes. So using a phone for audio. So my personal experience is, is that if the video isn't great, that's okay. If it's lagging a little bit, that's okay. But there's nothing worse than poor audio when someone's trying to talk and you can't hear what they're saying. Um, so one thing you could do is rather than using the audio from your computer, you could actually put in here, for example, maybe my cell phone and I'll have it call my cell phone and now I'll talk on my phone and the audio will come through my cell service instead of through my computer. Because once again, the situation is, is maybe my bandwidth on my Wi-Fi is poor and I get bought be better audio transmission uh, through my phone. So it will actually call my phone if I click call me. And don't worry, that's not really my phone number. So if you dial it, you'll be calling someone else. But uh, those are some of the common options that we see there. Oh, it looks like someone else is trying to uh, join the meeting. So that's another one. If you're inviting external participants um, that um, if they were not invited and they try to enter, for some reason they have the link, it's very, very secure. You're able to deny entry or you're able to admit their entry. So some of you may have seen that, especially when you're working uh, with external guests. So you have full control, okay? So I think that's the end of the demo here. So I'm gonna deny entry for this particular in individual so you can see how secure our service actually is, okay? So thanks everybody. I really appreciate your being, joining us for the session. You all look great. We're all wearing Google Cloud t-shirts. So we all look like we, we're matching. There you go, have a great one. So I do have um, a couple of more slides that I do wanna go over. So I do wanna remind everyone that we do have many resources that are available to you. Um, we have included these on the event page, but this is probably one of my favorites. It takes you to the Learning Center for G Suite. And not only do we have some great resources for your end users to get started with Google Meet, we also have great resources by every product that we have available. I'm not gonna click on all of these, but we do have documentation on how to work remotely. Um, there are some great resources. There's the cheat sheet that, that's available that you can share with your users. There's also uh, the YouTube channel itself that has some great resources. And I also will remind everybody about the education resources that are available and the EDU on air. Uh, live streaming events that go on as well, and some great resources we have available for our teachers. Okay, so I want to end with just a few additional top questions we get through our from our customers. I think I answered a lot of them as we were walking through the tool. Uh, the first one we get: Can external participants join in a call? Um, and the answer is uh, yes, if they're invited. And you'll notice in my case where someone was external. I had to admit them. So they couldn't just bomb the event. Uh, they actually either had to be an invited guest or they had to be um, admitted to attend. Um, is the meeting content secure? The answer is absolutely yes. As you know, all of our G Suite services are encrypted at rest, encrypted in transit. And we also use the G Suite authentication to authenticate users as they are joining the meetings as well. Um, is a third-party service required for dial-in access? The answer is no. If you remember when we were looking at the events, we noticed that Google provides a, um, a dial-in node, uh, a dial-in phone number. We also have international numbers that are available for other countries outside of the US as well. Okay. So that's it. I wanna thank everybody and remind you to join the Meet Expert website to get the full schedule and to be informed of any upcoming events. Stay healthy and stay safe.